This is the NFL on EA Sports, and we are in the Pacific Northwest at CenturyLink Field in Seattle, Washington. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. And that'll carry over the back line Let's of the end zone for Let's a touchback. from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And he takes this from the 30 to the 34. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Third and one, Jackson. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brad McDougal. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Well, not a good omen there. His first throw of the afternoon, intercepted. And I know what the fans are thinking right now. I hope they're... negative thoughts in his head going forward since that's his first throw of the game but one of the things I remember about him coming out of school is he's able to wipe things away pretty easily and move on after the interception here's Wilson and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Wilson now to throw again. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. On third down, Wilson. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Matt Judon with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Wilson in the offense not coming off the field. They're going for it on fourth. 
They'll try and throw for him with Wilson. And he's got Lockett. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. Wilson. He'll find Metcalf. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. To throw again on second down. Wilson, Matt Judon, able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. After the sack, third and goal now from the 12. Now Wilson. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Will Disley there to make the grab as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Pete Carroll in that familiar hands-on-knees pose. His guys will go for two here. To throw is Wilson. And he will get in to make it 8-0. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target, the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he'd taken a knee. As They'll start at the 21-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Mike 50. 
Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Draw play. Ingram now. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They run. It's Mark Ingram. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. One quarter down, 8 nothing. the score. before he could get out of the backfield. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. From the gun, Jackson. Open man is the tight end, Nick Boyle. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 26. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Willie Sneed, 26 yards, as they are now on the board here in the first half. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. They'll try and run with Ingram, and he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. So 8-8, eight, eight, our score now, as he'll send this one away. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Wilson. Open man is Jacob Hollister. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 at enemy territory. It's a gain of 15. First down, Seahawks. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Not today, you are. Not today. On first down, Wilson. He's going to rifle one deep left side. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Defensively, that's Earl Thomas, the all-pro safety, knocking it free. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. 
Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former Husky, Marcus Peters. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. In on the stop, Bradley McDougal. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually wrote that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. And that won't buy him much room. Just a one-yard gain to the five. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Jackson now down around his goal line. And that is incomplete. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. And they're going to at least line up to go for it here on fourth down. Check. Crunch. 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 Here we go on fourth down with Jackson. He uncorks it for Sneed, and they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out. And goodness, that means this next drive is going to begin first and goal already at the five-yard line. Now, this is a nice little gift wrap situation as they take over first and goal. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and goal at the six-yard line. Second and goal from the six this time. Two times, two times. Hey, four down, four down. Wilson on the keeper. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Well, they had that one snipped out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. All tied up, eight apiece with two minutes on the clock. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Defensively, that's Earl Thomas, the all-pro safety, knocking it free. A field goal would break the tie, but look at this. Instead, they're going to go for it on fourth and goal. They run for it with Carson, and he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. A five-yard touchdown run, and the Seahawks have taken the lead. Oh, this is what I love about calling these games. Fourth and goal. This is all about leverage. Who wants it more? And who's going to get it done at the point of attack, the line of scrimmage? Oh, it's a fake. They'll try and throw for it. 
That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And the fake attempt here, not going to work. Got a little yardage, but not enough to get to the goal line. Okay, they went for the fake off of the, the extra point attempt. It's a long way to go, and they didn't get there. Didn't get it completed successfully. Did someone dare them to do that? Did, did, did someone double dog dare them to do that? I was going to ask you, maybe they, they saw something on film, but do you see something on film when opposed to try something from the 15 on a PAT? I the, don't know. The only thing they needed to see on film there was a snap, a hold, and someone kicking the ball through the post. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And this offense last time turned it over when Ford on fourth didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. It's a gain of just three, and the offense likely going to yield to the punting unit here on fourth down. It's now fourth down. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. They'll indeed go for it with Jackson. He finds Roberts complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Fourth down conversion plays, you usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and ten. Jackson. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to the running game. It's Ingram. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make it third and 13. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. And that's caught inside the 30. 
That one goes for 30 yards. I guess that answers the question of whether or not they're going to try to play conservative and protect this lead in the third quarter. And I think this is something we're seeing more and more of in the NFL. Teams not playing to protect leads. Teams playing to extend them. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Wilson. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Defensively, that's Earl Thomas, the all-pro safety, knocking it free. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Now Wilson throwing again. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. They fight some off. That's caught by Hollister. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. This offense two for two converting on these thus far, so why not try again here on fourth down? They'll go for it. They're going on fourth down. It's Wilson. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tony Jefferson. And not much on the return there. He'll take it only up to the nine-yard line. Well, partner, let's put a bow on the Super Bowl for Kansas City. What a comeback win. Yet another come-from-behind victory for Patrick Mahomes and company. An absolute heartbreak for San Francisco. Didn't Madden predict Kansas City would win the game? Yes, 35-31, I believe they predicted. I felt like most of the predictions I saw had the game in the 30s, so a little bit lower scoring than we expected. But a lot of fireworks down the stretch, all by Kansas City. But how about San Francisco? Had the lead in the ball, under 12 minutes to go, and held Kansas City to 10 points through three quarters. And somehow, they're winging their way back to San Francisco, trying to understand how they lost that game. Yeah, not only did Kansas City win it, but they end up winning it by 11 points. Looking for Snead, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. And they will have the football deep in enemy territory all the way at the 10-yard line. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawks touchdown. Jacob Hollister. 
there to make the grab. And the Seahawks capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. Pete Carroll in that familiar hands-on-knees pose. His guys will go for two here. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Catch is made by Marquise Brown. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. They go play action here on first down. Roberts has it. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Jackson on first down. He uncorks it for Sneed. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. 25 yards that time. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. They go play action with Wilson. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Brandon Carr on the coverage there. There was no shyness there pushing the ball downfield, but I like the coverage on the play in good position. And when you have a 50-50 ball, who's going to come down with it? I like the way they made the play, came across, and knocked it away. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Play action. Now Wilson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Matt Judon able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Wilson and the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Here's Wilson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. 
You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. The offense is going to stay out there. They've converted twice, failed once so far on fourth down. Let's see what's in store here. They'll indeed go for it with Wilson. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. The 30, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Making a hat trick for Russell Wilson. Three touchdown passes now. Yeah, the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. That certainly went against the traditional ways of playing football, but who cares? Look at the result. Big touchdown. They went for it on their own side of the 50. So there's conservative, there's aggressive, and there's really aggressive, which is what we just saw there. Tip of the cap to them. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Had three interceptions in this game, and I would have to think. I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Ingram. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back now in Seattle, Washington. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. The Ravens on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. Jackson from the shotgun. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. To throw is Jackson. Robert's got it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give him 17 on that pickup. Jackson now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. From the gun, it's a run for Ingram. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Boy, the run on first down, a disaster as he's tackled well behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a full eight yards. And it sets him back for second down. So now they operate back from their side of the field here, second and long. We want it. Come to my world. Jim, 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 Jim. Now it's Jackson. This will be caught by Brown. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance, not with him. We've seen it too many times. Now with 
third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Throwing is Wilson. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Russell Wilson now with four touchdown passes on the afternoon. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. So another score there. And often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Jason Myers to kick off for Seattle. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together Charles and Knight. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bobby Wagner, the former second-rounder out of Utah State with a sack. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now it's Jackson. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Quentin Jefferson, he's the one that drops him this go around, and that pass rush getting strong here, back-to-back -back sacks. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Throwing is Jackson. It's complete to Sneed. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. A big pickup, 18 yards, but they still stop him well short of the marker. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They're running. Ingram. And this doesn't end well at all as they stop him far behind the line to gain. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. Check, check, check. 
Wilson wants to throw it. His throw caught at about the five. And all the way down inside the five to the four. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal after a gain of 19. First and goal at the four-yard line. What? What? Now Wilson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And the incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise they're throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you would think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead, but I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense is going to crowd the line of scrimmage. If you just hand it off inside, you're getting your running back popped a lot as well. Sometimes the defense dictates it. If they're going to crowd it, you may have no other choice but to throw it downfield. Second down and goal. Wilson to the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. Defensively, that's Earl Thomas, the all-pro safety, knocking it free. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your run. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. And there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Myers connects on the PAT, and that will extend this big lead. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. On first and 10, it's Jackson. And a big loss here as he's taken down. And one of the whistles for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Now Jackson. And my goodness, another interception. Able to get there and pick it. And now we're going to get...